What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the Kiss Capades podcast and today I have a very lovely guest with me. I'll let her introduce herself before we proceed. Tell the people your name and what you do. My name is Caroline. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, everybody, my friends call me Carol. I am a junior sommelier. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was I'm based out of the country, not in, but when I'm here, I try and get around, uh, meet a couple of my friends, talk mm-hmm. about wine, get to know what they know, you know, pick brains and stuff, because wine is changing every day. It's a learning process. Mm. I know nothing, and I'm happy to get it from somebody else, and I'm happy to share the knowledge that I have. And yeah, I'm feeling very grateful and thankful that you invited me here today, John. Of course, Thank of course. Thank you very much. We need more people like you. We need more people like you in the podcast. Oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I know just, of course, let's just do the, the tradition before we start the podcast. Cause okay. It's only fair because, you know, it's a wine episode. I know. What do you think of the wine? Oh, in fact, before we even start, why? Because I asked you, like, what wine should we go with yes. before we start the episode? Why, why was this your choice? Uh, before we started the episode, um, when, you, when you suggested about having wine and all of that, I oh, asked yeah. oh, you Oh, no, we don't, we don't have to describe everything that no. happened uh, <laughs> no. behind the scenes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Only to know what to pick for you. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I needed to know. But, I mean, that's it. I'll tell you something, my trainer... Yeah. Who told me when yeah. I was learning about wine? Yeah. Wine is like coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have dry wine, you have medium, you have light to whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, in case somebody approaches you, like in my line of work, I'm yeah. always working with guests and stuff. Yeah. And they ask you, what wine would you uh, recommend for me to have? Yeah. And I always go, like, I'm going to ask you a very weird question mm-hmm. What coffee do you like? Mm-hmm. And they go like, uh, well, yeah. a latte. If you tell me a latte, it means you, your coffee is like a shot in there. Mm. And then you have milk because a latte is more milk than coffee. Ah, yeah. So it yeah. means mm-hmm. you like your wines light. Okay. And if you tell me you like your coffee being a ristretto, which mm. is a really short espresso, yeah. then you are the full body. You are Bordeaux kind of. You are Malbec that's kind me, of. That's me. That's <laughs> me. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, no, my. Yeah, it's just my. <laughs> yeah, I had to get something to it, man. We're just <laughs> starting off with wine, and I'm super hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you being a tipsy, uh, a tipsy. Uh, no, I can handle myself. Come on, come on. Well, that's I've been what drinking. They said. I've been drinking <laughs> since like I don't know when. That's yeah, what they said. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Why? Why? Why would it matter? Oh yeah. You said like if I if I was an espresso kind of person, you'd yeah. choose. I, I, then it means you like your coffee really mm-hmm. strong, mm-hmm. which means really out there, really bold, and the acidity is high. Mm. Which means I'll pick for you a wine that is high in acidity, and really bold, and full. Which is why. Which is why I chose a Cabernet mm. Sauvignon. Okay. Because this grape as well as the Malbec as well mm-hmm. is really out there as, as well as the Tempranillo which is also one of them it's really really bold mm. so anybody who comes and says that, they, that is what they like yeah. I'll, I'll just pick something very and dark you know like you can actually even tell this is not very dark yeah okay but well it was already poured when we got it but if <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have just a small oh amount, yeah yeah the way you can tell uh wine is by looking at it against a white a white, a white background surface. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it's really really kidogo like the well mm-hmm. oh, yeah, love to speak yeah yeah, <laughs> when yeah it's really kidogo in the glass you just yeah. look at it against a white surface that's how you get the color the proper color that's why you mm-hmm. have light you have dark ruby does it mean it's much richer or it just means it's bolder Mm. Because a, l- a lot of um, extraction, maceration and everything mm. went in there to get the color to mm. that. And also the type of grape. Mm. Uh, if you look at the wine we're drinking today, it's Chilean. Mm-hmm. Chile is South America. Mm-hmm. It's hot. Not that I would know, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go with it. <laughs> of course, I know, I know the Chilean name. A Chilean wine but yeah. will be in the same class as 
an Argentinian wine. South American as well? Mm. Mm-hmm. Because it's really, really hot. Mm. Mm-hmm. Meaning also the, the sugar grapes levels. that are there. And, okay, yes, okay. the sugar levels are really high. That's how you get also the fruits that are really tasty. Mm. It's not a you can burn because of the heat. Oh, true. Like even the mangoes are like yes, the best. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Same MO for the grapes. Mm. If it's really sweet, it means the place it came from was a really hot climate. True. And okay. to get that um, sugar mm-hmm. to alcohol, yeah. you need a lot of heat and all these things combined. Okay. Now, before <laughs> before even go to like more details in wine and you know the wine industry and everything. Mm. I was telling you that I was really hungry, right? Mm-hmm. And I was picking like a little bit of different options <laughs> from the menu and he kept laughing at me every time I picked <laughs> something. I was like, yo, can I have it with cake? I was like, no, you're not supposed to have it with cake. Can I have it with, uh, what else did I suggest? What was that? I can't right? even remember. I can have wine with cereal, <laughs> man. <laughs> I have my cereal. <laughs> have wine. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mix it up and even pour some wine on top of the cereal. Uh, my heart is broken. <laughs> It's in tears. Yeah, so you told me like, even for cakes, it's not good to go with bread or something. If you if you're gonna have something sweet, and I'm like hungry. a cake, yeah, and you're hungry, mm-hmm. cake is a dessert. You'd rather even have the sweetest wine that they have, a moscato. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That will go with that. That one, I'll be like, go on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you're having a bold red. Mm-hmm. Unless this is like you've had dinner and you're getting to dessert, then fine. Yeah. But if that's the only thing you're gonna have, mm-hmm. like coffee and tea, coffee and cake, <laughs> it's not gonna be <laughs> wine and cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, I understand. I have I have a long way to go when it comes to food pairing with wines and different yeah. things. I also don't have that lockdown. Um, yeah. It, because it's. It's always like a learning day. process every yes, day. Mm, it's a learning mm, process every mm-hmm. day. So, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I don't know why he's doing the, yeah. the shameless, <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> I know. I think maybe he wants it to be there, but I'm like, yo. He's like, you know that product placement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's do this. At least that way, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You just know it's fine. I mean, he's like, I don't think this bottle you've turned it to. Uh, yeah, The yeah. label <laughs> must be seen. Yeah, so... We'll know which wine it is. We'll tell you at the end of the episode, but we don't have to plug them like the whole episode. <laughs> so, how did you get into like that, like hobby or industry? Because I want to know like where where you're coming from. Like, what other jobs have you done mm-hmm. uh, in the past that just led you to? I just want to know a bit about okay. you. It's not just about like you know car or <laughs> wine. No, we just want to know about you a, a bit as well before. We come back to the wine. All right. So when I started out um, in the hotel industry, yeah. I started out here in Kenya for the yeah. Intercontinental. Mm-hmm. And during my training, I remember uh, during that time of training, my trainer, who was the food and beverage director at the moment, mm-hmm. he used to give us nicknames uh, in terms of grapes yeah. and drinks. Nicknames. Yeah. Ah, okay. Like he was so cool. Mm-hmm. Like his class would not even be like a class. Mm. It will be something else. Yeah. So if you're in the lecture hall and he's talking about something and he wants you to answer. Mine was Chardonnay. So everybody Ooh. called me Chardonnay. <laughs> Chardonnay. Okay. 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 And he only gave names to specifics. Yeah. If he gave you a nickname of a wine or a drink. Yeah. It means his, your, his A team so to speak mm. like where we he sees your potential he sees your potential yeah so there was amarula there was chardonnay there was sauvignon there was a couple of people yeah so i kind of learned about grapes and wine at that time mm-hmm. but that was just basics for the job mm. i wasn't like really into it but i the thing that kept um running in my head was why the people liked like why is there so many different things mm. like and the tastes are so different yeah so and then every time i would go out i'm talking about 2010 so every time i'd go it's out way back yeah, yeah mm. every time i go out and i'd drink something i'm like Kwanza, there's a wine i'm not gonna mention that wine but we find it in uh, us i've told you that girl that <laughs> i took out and she kept asking for that wine that let's one. not mention her and let's not mention the wine but i'm just saying <laughs> 
let's see if somebody <laughs> and I had this convo with Melissa as well because uh-huh. if that's all that this person knows and even most of the time it's mm-hmm. like it's not that you don't have the money to spend on any good wine it's like you just don't know yeah you just don't you, know. you just don't know exactly so we go to different places and she keeps asking for this hey look at the waiter is like hey, my friend <laughs> My friend, okay. What's up? What's we know, up? we know yeah. from your wine. We know where you've been. Yeah, we know, and it says a lot how you choose yeah. like your wine, right? Mm. Okay, so now so uh-huh. I used to order, and then uh, first of all, now looking back at it, mm-hmm. I think they you don't need such kinds of glasses when you go to bars, mm-hmm. like the really tiny one that you know the Zaka glass. Mbaka, you're like, I'm paying. I'm not borrowing the wine. I'm paying for the wine. Yeah, yeah. but it's huku. You're like, yeah. How am I going to drink this one? Yeah, yeah. So I used to drink it at that time. I'm like, ah, Jesus, why is it so? Uh, should it be this bad? I could wine not, should be good. Yeah, I could yeah. not understand why is it so bad. And then when I go to work, mm. it's something totally different because at work, I see, pe- I pour the wine and the people enjoy it and they smell it and there's something else they do with their mm. mouth that I don't like, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, "Hey." Eh? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that mm-hmm. phase ended and I moved to the airline. Mm. I got to the airline. Um, airline meaning or like um what would you call it? So Flight what? attendant? Yeah. No. I was mm. on the ground for oh, Okay. For Hey, the way you're like, "No." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, so Because uh-huh. everybody assumes that. <laughs> no cause like even just how you walk, how you dress, I was just assuming you Be- you know. Because yeah, <laughs> the grooming standards there. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Boy, yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. remind me. The grooming yeah. standards there are top notch. So mm. you had to look a certain way. Like they'd literally walk through their airport, and if you if you could turn up with a grooming manager, and you're not, you get a grooming note. Mm. They don't care. You're supposed to you're represent supposed the company yes, in a certain look a certain way. Okay. So um, mm. when I went there, it wasn't much of it on the job. Mm, but mm. I got exposure mm. where I used mm. to go out mm-hmm. and then they would ask me if I said I want some wine what house do you have they, they tell me a Sauvignon Blanc and this one and that one I'm like hmm. mm. so now I'm put on the spot yeah because yeah, now like I do me from where <laughs> I come from <laughs> are you drinking that wine that we're talking about no <laughs> no sir <laughs> like no <laughs> I used to taste it like I, it can't be the, no yeah. I'd rather even do a beer yeah but not uh, you can't give me that yeah, yeah. it's like right now what yeah. the first thing I said is we can't do Frontera when I saw it yeah yeah no it's okay no 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 it's okay it's okay no <laughs> Melissa said it as well on the podcast she was like no on not the her, she was one. like no 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 we are not having this no 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 not this one but I was explaining to her like I remember now when I was in back when I was like in college I think mm-hmm. that's the first one that I used to start like buying a lot mm-hmm. and even then I think that's what I was treating my girlfriend to because we're going to the sup- that's the only th- listen mm-hmm. you see you, you <laughs> we're going to the supermarket mm-hmm. and when we go to the supermarket like that's the only bottle that seemed like you know like proper because all the other ones now you know <laughs> you're saying Frontera the other ones now ah. <laughs> first of all Mimi I don't I have nothing, yeah. and I think I told Melissa this, I have nothing against box wines, but there isn't a box wine that I'd be very interested in right now, knowing what I know. Yeah, but that's the thing. Once you start getting into it, yeah. and even a bottle of like a really decent or proper wine, some, some nice wines, mm-hmm. you'd get them almost at the same price at that as yeah. the other bottle. But yeah. now if you have that knowledge, definitely... You you have yeah. leeway to know what you, you, you yeah. will pick. So back to... So yeah. that's when, Sasa, I started having... Like, I, I decided, okay, I'm going to try a Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. So I tried it. I'm like, hmm. Mm-hmm. What have I been drinking? Mm-hmm. This, 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 this is, this is beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's nice. Mm. I was like, okay. So now I need to drink and, and actually... Think now. I started thinking. Okay, so why is this one different? Yeah. But still, I at that point I didn't know if there was wine courses or anything that could no. Like and just reach your knowledge. From yeah. And then I wasn't bothered. I was like, too much work. Too <laughs> yeah. Too much work. Yeah. Let mm-hmm. me just drink this one. So every if you ask anybody who met me between 2011 and 
2015, 2016, mm-hmm. I mean, I was Sauvignon Blanc diehard. You mm. come to visit me, ni bebe Sauvignon Blanc. That's what I need to have, yeah, yeah. Mm. So mm. I, I, I kept drinking, I kept drinking. Then I moved jobs. Mm-hmm. Then I went to the resort. First, uh, yeah, when I was at the resort for some time, mm-hmm. I wasn't immediately a junior sommelier. Yeah. I was just somebody they would consult about drinks because I kind of had the knowledge and plus I was in the airline. So oh, yeah. I, I had. Oh, so you had like, you know, that background eh. knowledge on if somebody asks you about this, you'd recommend yes. this and this. But it's still not yet like. Mm. Yeah. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a resort that was already established for a while. No, mm. They were just opening. So it yeah. was still stages of Monzo Monzo. Mm-hmm. Then, I, then uh, they had the wine training brought in. Mm-hmm. And the the guy was like, I'm selecting just a couple of people to do this training. You're one. Mm. So I did the training. Let me tell you. It was four days of intense training. Mm. We taste 14 bottles of wine mm-hmm. every day. So you walk into a class, there's glasses, there's mm. bottles displayed, and there's water, and there's buckets. Mm. And the manuals, <laughs> <laughs> the manuals yeah, yeah. are like this. Yeah. So I, I was like, hey, okay. Mm-hmm. Sour. So I, the trainer was really nice. He was from Dubai. He came in, Akanza. I said, first, uh, I'll just give you the basics of wine. So that's when he gave us the, you have the white sheet of paper. This is what you know about. Or how you can look at. Yes. He said, smells. Mm. Mm-hmm. He said, um, tomorrow when you come to class, do not wear any perfume. Because now we can't smell oh. the wine. Mm. So that's why when you go for wine tastings. It's, it's interesting because you came here with a really strong. Yeah. And so that's why we did not smell. Expensive smelling, you know. What did you say the name of the perfume was again? Me and my two coins. What was the <laughs> name? <laughs> no, don't say that. That's a lie. I can tell when like, you know, that's the first thing I was like, oh, that smells actually really good. Well, but now it's interfering with our shameless wine. blood. Yeah. It's yeah. Lancome. Ah. It's yeah. Midnight Rose Lancome. Go, go look for that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we did not smell the wine. But I I couldn't even tell him, let me smell the wine. Oh, because you already could, you I, know yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I already know I have perfume on, I cannot smell it. Mm. Because now, I might be smelling flowers. Yeah. It's already... But the wine doesn't have flowers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. True, true. So, they give you the basics, they start telling what is wine, what is uh, mm. the farming, the, the cultivation of grapes and everything. So. In those four days, the amount of knowledge I got, mm. and then the sleepless nights I had. Sleepless in. In terms of you have to when oh, I say to the read manuals, actually oh you actually have to read. You have to read because in the, after those four days mm. you have an exam. Mm. Mm. So it's not and just drinking fa- and fun. If you fail that exam, you don't get certified, mm. and you don't get these um, a badge that they give you. Yeah. Um, you don't get the two. So mm-hmm. you can't say that you've gone through to wine wine this course, studies or You can't say you're certified. Or and this was level two, yeah. so you can't do level three. Mm-hmm. So it was very very intense, and um, the research that went into it because I had to, now I started even getting on apps that I never knew about, mm. and it was so and it, it was very interesting for me because now I knew why the wines tasted different. Mm -hmm. And now if you tell me that you have a wine from uh, where? where South Africa? South African wine from a certain place and you tell me you have an Argentinian wine or a wine from New Zealand, I know already what to expect. Oh, what kind of taste, what kind of look. Mm. Uh, Yeah, just because of the grapes that are there. Exactly. mm. I already know if I'm going to get tropical fruit. I already know if I'm going to get very cold climate-ish kind of fruits. I already know if I'm going to get a lemony taste. Mm. Stone fruits like peach or whatever. I already know. Yeah. So every time I... Now it's easy for me to buy a bottle of wine. Because mm. I look at the country, I already know what I'm expecting. Ah. So like when it comes to that, that since you've mentioned that, when it comes to personal choice, mm-hmm. what country do you like mostly go for when you're picking your wines? 
It depends with the grip also that I, no. <laughs> depends on what? <laughs> because no. Because my favorite wines, my favorite grapes yeah. are either Pinot Noirs or What the hell is that? You said Pinot, Pinot, <laughs> Pinot Noir? Pinot Noir. <laughs> Pinot Noir. <laughs> 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 uh, just come back after five five minutes. Five. Yeah. So Pinot Noir. I that's why <laughs> that's why <laughs> that's why <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to take on. <laughs> Hold on. So the reason that I took a short break it's cause I just noticed a little <laughs> a little I can say like is it a, a it's not a fly, is it? It's one of those two little insects. Orange eyes. Yeah, I've just noticed like a, a little uh, insect that's found its way inside her glass. And I was like, yo, should we take a break? But we're like, you know what? Why don't we talk about this? Because if this happens like in a restaurant, yeah. and I think, you know, it's because we have like a garden, of course, out here, yeah. a, a little garden and stuff. So you'll definitely, you can't miss like small insects and stuff. Mm. But we're just explaining about how if it happens to you in a restaurant and how that kind of situation is supposed to be handled. Yes, we are spilling the tea on things you should look out for. In the service industry. <laughs> so yeah, so we were saying, ideally, you shouldn't um, tell them to... If you ever have a glass of wine like this one and something gets in, yeah. and you let the person know if you're not willing to drink it because, you know, you can just decide to remove the fly. And move on with your life but if you decide that you want another glass of wine most well most most decent places for lack of a better word i'll say decent in quote um yeah. they will if you ask they will not take the glass away they will bring you another wine then take the one with the fly away why is that mm -hmm. because if they take away the glass and don't come at me, service personnel. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah. We are in the same industry. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of the notorious ones, what they do, they take away the glass of wine, they go take a tissue and remove the fly. And bring back there. Buy time for like two, three minutes. Yeah. And then bring it back to you. You're thinking, you, you, uh, oh, they might also change your glass because mm. you probably have lipstick on. Prints, fingerprints, yes. and stuff, right? So they will change the glass for you and then they'll bring it back but it will be the same wine that had the fly in there. Uh, yeah. So we just decided, you know what, instead of pausing the podcast, why don't we actually like just keep going, talk about that. And then, of course, they're exchanging, like bringing us a different uh, glass of wine. Yeah. Just classic scenarios of things that might actually just happen to you mm. when you're out there trying to to have a good time and have a good time and it, yeah. it's not gonna hurt if you have such a situation and then you tell them bring me another one if you this is the thing with service if yeah you, if you tell them they already know you know <laughs> or oh, you know the kind of you mm. know you yeah. already know what happens uh -huh. yeah. now you see and practical you? example of how it should be done I yeah know. so they bring you the other glass and take away there the one that was uh, having the one that had the fly or whatever that had our friend there, mm -hmm. an invited <laughs> guest. Yeah. So, speaking of which, why, why did you decide to pursue like whatever it is like right now? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have like a name of exactly what to do. I know I can call it like the service industry, right? Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to pursue it? Um, can I say overseas? Is it overseas? Uh, yeah. yeah, right? It's well. not in the country. <laughs> yeah, so. Pale kwa kona ya country. Yeah. We, we drove by bus. <laughs> yeah. Why not try and pursue that same kind of thing in the country, Kenya? Okay. Because you seem very happy where mm -hmm. you are right now. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, I was introduced to the wine. Well, everything about wine was introduced properly out there. Mm -hmm. And the the place I work in, the resort I work in, is very high end. Mm -hmm. So the variety that they have, mm. uh, it <laughs> is 
It's heaven mind for you, right? Blow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. If well I try and uh, they have everything because they have pocket friendly, they have uh, tycoon much, friendly. How, how much is pocket friendly? Definitely not a duty free kind of price, but you'll mm-hmm. you'll still find the same wines in duty free for a fraction of the price. Like I want to know numbers, man. Like my people want to know numbers. <laughs> there are listeners. There are some people who want to know, like, okay, Sawa, so I, I can spend this ca- much on, like, you know, the cheapest. The yeah, cheap. and I had that conversation with Melissa, and I was telling her, like, okay, ideally, because, like, you know, in Kenya, mm-hmm. you can get ripped off because somebody would say, like, immediately, just because I've imported this from Italy. Mm. I can sell this bottle for a certain amount of yeah. price because maybe the knowledge of wine is not that that much yeah uh, but if you go to Italy you might find like the same bottle is probably like around twenty dollars <laughs> or maybe fifteen dollars or something mm. yeah so it's it's okay for for us to discuss prices so that people can just know well the the wine that I will the wine that is priced lowest. Mm-hmm. Where I work mm-hmm. is five thousand, about five thousand bob. Okay. So fifty dollars, right? Yeah, about fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a good wine. Mm-hmm. If you find it in the market, you'll probably because I, as I, uh, as I said again, duty free will give you a fraction of the price. So if you find it in duty free, it's probably like eleven dollars. Mm. Yeah. So the most expensive one that you have there? Chateau Margaux 2007 Vintage. This bottle. You know what? I'll just show you the bottle. (laughs) What is it called again? (laughs) A Chateau Margaux. Mm. (laughs) Where's it from? What's the name from? Where's the name from? When you hear Chateau Margaux, French. French? Yeah. Anything Chateau. Mm. It's French because the French call their gardens or their farms or Chateau. chateaus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like ranches and where South America and chambas in Kenya. Yeah, there. Y- <laughs> there you go. See, <laughs> <laughs> it's like those people who have ranches in Nanuki. Mm-hmm. Yes, those ones. Exactly. <laughs> and as you show me that, mm, where is it? You have the. So I just needed. I'll just need you to read the post. Uh, a Chateau Margaux. I can't even pronounce some of these things. Vintage. Two thousand and seven. Mm-hmm. Malot. Cabernet Sauvignon. A blend of. I don't want to pronounce these things the way they're not supposed. To. This is Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Yes. Bordeaux. Okay. Okay. The clarity on the palate. Of the sweet cherry and cassis fruit, black currants, and a bit of minty oak. A bit of minerality is also detected. Tannins are very light and smooth, almost silky with a nice long finish. Retail price four hundred and thirty dollars. <laughs> so for this. Four hundred and thirty dollars. It's like you're booking the room and then you get the bottle of wine. Now <laughs> you're drinking the bottle of wine. This is just one bottle, <laughs> and I've had uh, guests come in and have five of those in one sitting. Easy. Easy. One person, but maybe three, four people having a good time. Make it like another one, another they, one. Yes, they have five of those, and then maybe afterwards they have. Uh, a Marceau, a Joseph Druhin of about slightly about a hundred dollars, or a Dom Perignon. Okay. How's how's how much is a bottle of Dom Perignon at your? So mm. that we just give people a context of how much you know people are spending on on a table seating. I'm trying to do the math. Yeah, in dollars that is. What's the currency at? Um, you are based in Oman, Oman right? Yes. What's the currency there? Omani reals. I don't even know the exchange <laughs> rate and everything. So the exchange rate to a shilling is two hundred and sixty-three. So if you have one Omani real, you have two hundred and sixty-three shillings. Cheese. Yeah. Cheese. <laughs> yeah, but when somebody is spending that kind of money on a bottle, mm-hmm. from your point of view, 
Do you get one? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so a bottle of Don Perio would be 105,000. Yeah, 105,000 Kenya shillings. That's a thousand, at least a thousand dollars. Of course, you have to tip someone after spending that kind of money. Yes. Come on. Yes. And you're not just drinking, you have to eat as well. Uh, there you and go. entertain guests. There you go. And they'll probably stay there uh, five nights. And they might do this every day. Yeah. And they will not stay in a cheap room. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Clearly, what we're talking about is like, yeah, yeah, but that's a whole completely different topic. That we, <laughs> if we get into that, that's a whole completely different topic. But, I know. But when somebody's spending that amount of money on a bottle of wine, uh, just as a bystander or a wine sommelier, would you say they're getting their money's worth? They are, because number mm-hmm. one, I'll not let you pour your wine. Mm-hmm. Like, I will, be, for you have spent this much <laughs> amount on a bottle of wine yeah you shouldn't even the only thing you should be doing is just li- lifting the glass to your mouth <laughs> you just do this refill you say jump i ask you how high yeah but the thing with most of the people who spend this kind of money mm-hmm. they are the easiest people to deal with mm. the most laid back people yeah because they already live in money yeah they know what they should they should get don't need to prove a point yeah. or anything. So you'll find that so easy. All you just keep pouring and say thank you. Sometimes they'll tell you, uh, maybe I might have the second bottle with the main course. Huh. So Mimi, I will be happy. Another hapo. one? Yes. So Mimi, <laughs> I'll, I'll just be happy. I'm the starter. The minute you finish that starter, I'm yeah. over there with the bottle. Yeah, you're like, I'm, another I have one, sir? one job. Yeah. I don't have. I have one job. And that's what we were saying. We were saying earlier today, somebody has one job to do. <laughs> one job. You have one job to do, yeah. and you're tired of doing that <laughs> job in the morning. We can't. I know. We can't help you. I have we, one job. So that one job mm-hmm. is to make sure that by the time you leave there, yeah. not only do you remember the wine, you remember the experience. The experience. Everything that you know. I'm giving you conversation. If you want to talk, I'm giving you conversation. Yeah. We are talking. You're, well, you're not trying to get to know me in that kind of <laughs> no, way. But <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, you're giving them like all the attention that they would need. Cause. Exactly. I'm not in your face. I'm yeah. just enough. Mm-hmm. And then tomorrow, when you come back, I will address you by your name. Yeah. Because okay. you have to remember. Yes. Yeah, you can't. I remember what you were drinking and I'll ask you. Yeah. Same thing you were drinking. I will remember your food. Same thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that's how you end up creating rapport and relationships. Nice relationships with these people. Because you never know. I mm. mean, you just never know. And it's so crazy because uh, we were talking about like, like just how you're treating someone if mm-hmm. you're in the service industry. You'd never know who you're talking to. I know. You'd never know who you're talking to because this could be the next your next best friend. Exactly. Next best person who changes or introduces you to a whole network that will change your mm. business idea into something. Very true. Something else. You Very get like true. that 10, 15 second elevator pitch, mm. but you're given like almost like half an hour to interact with this person in a very nice way that they, mm. that might actually even change your life. Exactly. Okay, s- speaking of that, uh, how have you found like the drinking culture, I'd say abroad as compared to in Kenya, because wa- were you here in December? No. No. In so December you. I was minting money, selling expensive okay. wine. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So yeah, w- speaking of, you missed the wine uh, festival. That's what I want I to talk about. I was so bummed. Yes. I was hooked. Or just I was yes. like, I need to stay off social media yeah. because <laughs> it was two days of I was amazing so wine experience. Bummed, and I kept texting my friends and telling them because. Now the circle of friends that I have, yeah. When they need, they they call me. Mm-hmm. They call me an in-house con- connoisseur. <laughs> Why in-house? Because when they need to know something, they just about text me. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I want to drink this. Is it good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah. You have Google for that. But I might just be joining them at that. <laughs> I might just be asking you. I mean, if it's uh, so, yeah. Basically, if you missed out on the wine. Um, wine festival, festival yeah mm-hmm. I would say 
but you saw like pictures and videos of how it was and yeah. everything because I also did like my little snippets where I was interviewing people and stuff mm -hmm. uh, that was still when I was experimenting whether I should do a podcast or not should I do it or not that's where it started oh, okay yeah so uh -huh. compared to just your experience in Kenya when people are out drinking wine mm -hmm. and when people are drinking wine abroad what's the difference in cultural uh, just drinking drinking behavior um i'd say drinking culture sorry the drinking i'd, I'd say you know like kenyans sorry to interrupt uh -huh. you but kenyans we tend to like if we're drinking we drink to almost get drunk like at the wine festival <laughs> people are passing out <laughs> People are passing out. I remember specifically two people who were carried out of the venue no. to be assisted. Yeah, like blacked out, like they're taking, being taken to their Uber and cars. Yeah, so if you're drinking like that, if I see you like that at a yeah. wine festival, yeah. I already know what you're used to. Mm -hmm. Wine is not for you. Wine is not for because you because you're drinking to get drunk. Yeah, and I have had experiences with <laughs> friends of my, well. It's okay. There's a, there's a girlfriend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to say their name. Uh, I no, mean, uh, I'm not it's a story. Yeah, it's just I'll a say story. this story and then she's going to text me because I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll uh -huh. say that. Yeah. Um, so we were out drinking and um, we thought, oh, there's this party we've been called to, da, 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 da. And they said, mm -hmm. uh, what would you guys like to drink? We were like, wine. And they're like, we already got you. Yeah. We, ha we have wine free-flowing. We're like, cool, we're yeah. going to come. Mm -hmm. So we show up. Oh, b before we show up, we already had a discussion. We're like, "Hey, but this wines of we 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 got you. Let's let's just go see what it is first what of all." What it before. is? Yeah. So we had a discussion and we quoted a certain kind of wine that mm -hmm. we do not expect to be there. Yeah. We show up. Mm -hmm. That's the largest bottle there. Yeah. We're like. <laughs> 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 so we walked in yeah and I was like oh there's the bar and I look at the bar and she goes like where and we both look at it and we look at each other mm -hmm. and we're like hmm do you know that's how we ended up ordering another bottle of wine because it was we're like oh <laughs> we can drink it but no 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 mm -mm. Mm -mm. yeah and then you don't have to. I don't have to. Yeah. But yeah. again, uh, same th thing, like I was talking, because I like passing knowledge and when someone is interested, mm -hmm. I will definitely, if you ask me questions, I will answer. Mm -hmm. So I recently, the last time I was here, which was four months ago, I met somebody and we became friends and he asked me. A guy? Yeah, a guy. Ooh, <laughs> okay. okay. We became friends <laughs> and we got to talking because he was very interested um, mm -hmm. on the wine because the first day we met he was like would you like some wine and I was like sure it was on the table and I the first thing I did is I held a bottle and I looked at it mm -hmm. it was a Pinot Noir and I said sure because you're like okay this is somebody I might get along with yes if you're having a Pinot Noir yeah then that's good wine okay. so I already know mm -hmm. well I already know how this is going to go like I will not be bored yeah, yeah. it's an interesting you. person. Who yes. It, yeah, and like we said, the cho your choice of wine mm. might as well say a lot, a about, lot you. about you. But then again, after that, so when we're then uh, we're talking about wine and all these things, he goes like, "You do you know a lot about wine." Yeah, I said, "Yeah, yeah." And he was like, "I mean, what do you do?" I'm like, "Wine." Mm. He was like, "Ah, okay, okay." So. I had a tasting then, and I was like, would you like to come along for the tasting? Or? And he goes like, sure. So we meet up for the tasting, and I, I, during the tasting, I'm, I got a couple of bottles of wine, different wines. Yeah. Uh, and we ended up sitting and having a conversation, drinking the wine. And he said, before you explain to me how the wine goes and the smelling and the taste, yeah. I... Uh, one of the people used to just drink to drink like i will drink wine to get drunk 
Yeah. Not I will drink anything. Yeah, to the get people who wine. should have been, you know, at the wine, f- at the a good example of the people who are a majority of the people who are at the wine festival, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm saying like the cultural difference. It's very, it's very big because, and also it's not to say that out there we don't have the same type of people who drink to get drunk. Uh-huh. We do, but you actually can tell because I, w- I would, and people never understand how I do this. My friends also I, mm. I can I'm that person who can go to a bar sit at the counter and just ask for a nice glass of wine and just drink it yeah with no other company yeah just me and my glass of wine and I'll drink and I'll leave and I'll go home I've enjoyed myself so that happens a lot out there you find people just going out just asking going out for a glass of wine and sipping. they have a book yeah so you you see that out there and then also in my interactions uh, with my line of work, people enjoy asking, inquiring about wine. It's not like I know all the sorry. It's not like I know all the wines that I have mm-hmm. out there. No, I mean, and there's so many wines. But if someone points, could I get this wine? Because the wine list that we have is yes. huge. Could I get huge. this wine? Is it good? Mm-hmm. I'll say. I'll I'll just look at what you're pointing and the. Cream. I already know about the grape, so I'll describe the grape just a bit. You, you'll think, I've had this wine. Oh, I know about this wine. I've had it before. I have never even seen this bottle. Yeah. So but I'll just go, yeah, I'll go look for it. And the first thing, I always tell somebody, when you get a bottle of wine, turn it. Read. Mm-hmm. This will tell you everything you need to know. If it's written in English, of course, because some written <laughs> is different in Italian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but I might read... I might read, yes, I'm getting the information, mm-hmm. but I still don't know, is it good wine or not? Well, it, now, that's where, um, if you already know what you like. Ah, okay, okay. okay. If you already oh, no, know I, I what get you, you like, I get you. then I get you. buying wine is very, you just turn. Like yeah. this one says, a full-bodied wine with bramble and plum characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon has a rich palette packed with juicy fruit and a lingering finish. So you already know, a lingering finish. Mm-hmm. You'll have it in your mouth for a bit. Ah. Kimeza, you'll have it in your mouth for a bit. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, when, I still feel that. Yeah? Feel that, yeah? And when I say tannins in wine, what I mean is, you see when you have like a sour fruit, a really sour fruit. Lemony, is, lemon? Yeah. And then you have the saliva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That is so that's it. When, because when you get the acidity of the wine, what's the first thing you feel? The taste buds are almost and like And then wet there's you. a lot of saliva yeah, in the wine. So that means really the acidity is really high okay so i'll just go i read the bottle Mm -hmm. and i'll come and i'll describe it in two words or three words Mm. and i'll say well i'll present the bottle to you Mm -hmm. and i'll say you will taste plums okay it will be long uh we'll have a long finish when when you drink it and it's not it's medium body so the thing with when you're explaining wine you don't say it's medium body (laughs) no (laughs) <laughs> you need to feel it. You slow it down yeah, and just you show that you're actually passionate. And that's the thing I've noticed with a lot, even when it comes to those wine tastings that I've gone, mm-hmm. that people are always super hammered by the time you're done. <laughs> I always get to the thought, but this the way it's described. Mm. You actually feel like that's something I'd want to go and buy or have. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you. Ah, yeah, try the Cabernet. It's full body mm-hmm. and it's short finish, like just short. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say that. But that doesn't make you like even want yeah. to try it. Yeah. So if I'm describing, it's like, remember that chick that, chick that you have a crush on? Describe mm. her to somebody. Mm. Like, listen. If I describe this. that way to them, they might be go off and wow. actually start trying to get them <laughs> instead of. <laughs> no, but I get, I, I, I get what you're saying. You take your time. And yes. So by the time I'm presenting the wine, I go like. It's a 2017 vintage, mm. which means um, it's more or less young. It's a young grape. Okay. So it's very fresh. The Cabernet is a medium body, so you're going to have like a medium body taste. You're not going to have that, um, that feel, that you know, choking, like bone dry kind of feel. Mm. No, it's just going to be beautiful. And you know, when you swallow it, you just keep feeling the red plum in your mouth. And the minute it hits your tongue on the first taste, you feel the plum itself. And the take my money. That's why I'm like, take my money. <laughs> take my money. I want whatever she's having. And then you're like, 
would you like it? Yeah. Would you, would you like to taste it? By the mm. time I get to, would you like to taste it? I'm, I'm, it's sold. It's sold. If you're not telling me that you want to open that bottle, <laughs> you'll be like, the next thing you'll tell me, mm, yeah. no, I don't like plum. Do you have any other suggestion? You'll want me to suggest something. Oh, else. yeah. But because you seem to have like all the knowledge yeah. that I would want, and I'm definitely comfortable with any recommendation that exactly. but might I didn't come know from anything. you. But I didn't know anything about the bottle when you pointed it out to me, did I? <laughs> no. <laughs> the next thing I'd like just to ask you in regards to wine. Mm -hmm. How do you enjoy a glass of wine and not get um, like a hangover? I hear like there's some certain types of wine from different places. Some would give you a hangover and apparently there are different regions or different grapes that when used to make wine, they won't give you a hangover. Or like what's just like the w best way to enjoy wine and do you hydrate, do you take soda, do you take juice, do you eat nice food so that when you wake up in the morning it's... It's all the roses. Yeah, or should you, <laughs> if you're going out, should you make, can you mix it when you're on a night out or just stick to wine? How would you enjoy it in a nice way without those repercussions of in the morning why was i out why was i drinking number one yeah hydrate mm -hmm. i will never get tired of this even if you see people drinking four or five glasses of wine they yeah. always have water so should we have water Other here we'll have sparkling water you think we're not going to have water <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. I'm sorry, but uh -huh. we will have water. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need to have water. I, mm -hmm. I prefer sparkling water because of the bubbles. Mm -hmm. and it Any specific reason or just like? You know? For me, it kind of cancels out. It levels out the alcohol mm. because mm. still water. You you have still water, but I me, mean, I just prefer sparkling water. Mm. I enjoy sparkling water more. Mm -hmm. So, number one, hydrate. Number two. If you're gonna go out mm -hmm. and you decide you're gonna have wine, yeah. if you're gonna go for a cabernet, mm -hmm. please stick to the cabernet until your night is over. Yeah. If you're gonna mix grapes, then I'm sorry tomorrow you'll wake up with a hangover. Mm. Wine festival. There you go. Mm -hmm. Because you're mixing grapes. Yeah. Different grapes have different alcohol contents. They have. Uh, different um, tastes. Some as Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. You people who drink sweet wine, mm -hmm. we need to meet in the yellow tent. Why? <laughs> Why? 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 If I, I, I have friends also who drink sweet wine and I don't understand. To me, it's like having juice. It's like having juice that has been what's, there for a what, What's this, first of all? Is this, this, is, this is not sweet wine? No, it's... Do Yo, I don't know. Listen, I'm learning. I'm learning. And trust me, here's the thing that you need to know about me. I always ask. I always ask. I always ask. <laughs> <laughs> I always ask. And I have to. Because by the time you leave here, today I'll be like, you know what? You know. Yeah, I, won't, I, won't I won't make the same mistake again. Don't worry, this is a reaction. Yeah, every, yeah. This is the reaction I have with every person. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have to. It's a medium bodied. Medium bodied. Yes. Medium so if bodied I, if wine. Yeah. It's dry. A sweet wine will. will this is. Medium mm -hmm. is light on the palate. Okay. You, you can tell. Yeah, it, it's it, not too strong. Yeah. It's not too. Mm -hmm. Bone dry, a dry mm -hmm. bone dry mm -hmm. will have the effect. See the way you have an espresso? Yeah. The way you feel. Whoo, it, that kick. That kick. Yeah. That's a that's a very bold. That's a kick you get to the Malbec. That's a kick you get to the Merlot, mm. depending on where the Merlot is from. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's the kick you get with, you know, really, really like blends which have a Shiraz and a Cabernet like. Even if it's blending out, when you have a blend, it yeah. kind of mellows one or the other. Mm. But you always have something that is over there. Mm -hmm. So when you have like this is this is medium medium so this is basically almost semi dry semi dry and also dry you'll always have that dryness okay so why and what would be the reason of not like you wouldn't you don't enjoy sweet personal preference number 1 i don't like if it's not 
juice I'm having, mm-hmm. we're not we are not having it. Like I, I don't want my alcohol sweet. Sweet plus the sweetness, the sugar mm-hmm. in alcohol. Sugar is what alcohol is. Mm-hmm. So ask yourself why when you're out for the night do you have do you go out at night after a heavy night of drinking mm-hmm. do you just decide I'm going to have juice for me mm. I drink at least a liter of juice in the morning in the morning yeah but not when you're drinking no no not when I'm drinking yeah because it's too yeah but would you but if you have that sweetness the size of your hangover yeah Is oh, it's it going to be crazy. Oh. Oh, if you drink that in the wine at if night. If you have even look at the sweet. spirits. When yeah, you're yeah. mixing spirits. Yeah. If you have whiskey and Fanta. Yeah. The way your head you'll not have memory of your previous night. See, but those little things that we take for granted if you're not in that um in that uh space space knowledge, industry, man, uh, you won't know, you won't mm. know because somebody will be like, "Hey, if any this if it's a vodka I'm having and it's this strong, I need something sweet to balance, to cancel it yeah. out so that I can enjoy at least this bottle. And now I'm thinking in terms of, let's say, like just college kids in general mm-hmm. who are like starting to actually like get into the drinking culture. Yeah. And they can go out and enjoy themselves, wake up, still bounce to class, mm-hmm. uh, run some errands. If you're into like a sports nini team, you're supposed to still go and participate that, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, those two little things that they might know on how to mix their drinks and party, have a good time, but still tomorrow you're mm-hmm. up functioning well. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, water, yeah. and then when you're drinking wine, yeah. it's not a race. It, we are not rushing, we are not mm-hmm. running. Maybe if it's a guy who's taken you out and you're with your friends, so you're, you're trying <laughs> to drink as much as he can buy. It's like if we finish this bottle, we buy the next one. Then, <laughs> then you're not drinking to enjoy. You're <laughs> drinking to get drunk. Yeah, yeah, true. But if you're drinking to enjoy, yeah, yeah and this is this is how you, ladies, this is yeah. how you set your standards. Yes. If Tell them. If you're drinking to enjoy, yeah, somebody who's been watching you. Yeah. will know that you don't have time to waste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll probably think you're lonely, but it depends also with the kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. But if it's somebody who who is actually thinking of approaching you, yeah. They, they'll they'll probably think a couple of other things. Maybe your re- red light district kind of Person. You're working. You're, you're working. working. You're working. You're a working girl. Mm-hmm. You're working, but independent working girls. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. True. But if you dr- you drink, mm-hmm. pole pole, like not really slowly, but you know, you're just sipping. You're, you're just, just sipping you know, and enjoying yeah, yourself. Yeah. Pace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody will notice. Yeah. That you're actually sipping and enjoying yourself. Mm. So, when you have wine, I always say, "Atakamani." one glass always have some water after that mm, mm. because i don't know how your alcohol efficacy is yeah. so you might get drunk after one glass mm. depends with what you're drinking as well so when you have some water then after when you're out on a date with that person and it's your first date and you're and you're not sure how the date is gonna go mm-hmm. so you drink wine because it's a it's an icebreaker mm. But then you still have your water because you still have your sanity. Uh-huh. So you balance it out. So you enjoy when you when you have your wine slowly. Yeah. You actually do enjoy. You get and to. It's yeah. not that you don't get that, and that, that, that's the thing with wine. You don't want that uh, sudden, like you know, oh shit, I'm tipsy. Yeah. 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 But so if you just ease, it's sort of, sort of like you can just ease into the highness mm-hmm. and you can still be aware of like, okay, so this is enough for me. There you go. And then also learn learn your tastes. Like mm. you, when you're drinking out there, you you know what, when I taste this, it's I feel like this. When I taste that, I feel like this. Yeah. It's just learn what you enjoy. Learn what you, you feel good when you're drinking. See at you, you drink, you sip the wine, and then you go like, 
and it's a short. <laughs> okay, how much? How much? Uh, speaking of that, like, how much is enough? Like, how many glasses ideally would you like drink when you're out? Not going crazy. Oh wow, that's what we. That's what you do. Okay, sips wine. <laughs> okay, cause. I'll tell you why I'm asking that, because mm -hmm. I remember, I won't say her name, she's one of my friends, and I'm sure she listens to the podcast, we haven't talked in a while, but I remember a few years back, she used to tell me, you know what, if you're taking a girl out, um, just buy, buy a bottle of wine, buy a bottle of wine, don't buy, buy the glass, yeah. buy a bottle, because mm -hmm. it will sort of like, if you get a bottle for her, she will even like set her own like just you know drinking pace yes because now like you're saying she'll start probably to like just start enjoying it because mm. the whole bottle is, is there and it's and, hers and it's also i think cheaper when yes. you buy by the bottle by the bottle because by the glass a bottle has four glasses yeah depending on what size of glass you use if you use the tiny ones that i really hate mm -hmm. this one's is over here mm -hmm. get like five <laughs> <laughs> which I still don't understand. Yeah. If you serve me wine in that, <laughs> like this glass <coughs> is different from this one. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a problem with a glass, but yeah, I, I but feel some type of way. Why? Because? Tell me, it has, this has, has a thicker stem. That, that's what I can tell for sure. I will... If I'm serving you red wine, well, yeah. potentially this is a white wine glass. Mm -hmm. Because see the top. It has a the top smaller, is smaller rim. And red wine needs a bigger space mm. to have air mm. into oh, it. Oh, so they did a mistake uh, doing this? I'm not calling them out, but. Hey, no, I mean, listen, it's all about, it's a learning process. Yeah, We're that's all why learning. That's and why you see, these you little things mm -hmm. that you're talking about, that's what people need to hear and understand because like even for me when i'm served this i'm like mm, thanks but you see like for you you're paying attention to those little things because that's your industry you know mm. and that's why like i was saying instead of us just having coffee let's us let's have wine and we've even talked about like if something gets into your drink mm -hmm. the classic scenarios of there's a place where you'll go and then you'll say there's something in my drink they look at you like yeah this hour <laughs> okay <laughs> okay <laughs> yes you try it so <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> but you know we are painting all these scenarios in just actual things that we're experiencing yeah. right now and true. they make a very big difference as well yeah. so basically yeah. um i understand maybe also it's the finances in kenya and the for the glasses for this place <laughs> oh hell no I'm I'll, just make sure saying they, I'll, I'll make sure they I'll make sure they see this snippet oh my gosh okay so you, you do not expect <laughs> I do not expect Olivia Pope kind of glasses. Oh, you okay. watch Scandal, right? Yeah, yeah. So the Olivia Pope goblet, that, that those goblets. Yeah. yeah. Those goblets yeah. are what I need in my life. Yeah. So I know they the big one. Yeah, yeah. But um, you should just have when you serve red, you should just have a bigger space mm -hmm. at the top, and then when you serve red, mostly yeah, you serve it in baka hapa. Because you oh. know, red needs time to have air injected into it so that you can have the flavors more. Mm. That's why you see mostly when you taste a red wine, yeah. most of the people swirl it more ah, so yeah. that you have also you oxygen need you also need it, that space. It shouldn't food. be put up to so now at the, wine, chai. at the wine <laughs> festival. No, at the wine festival, you know, you have like all these little things that you can redeem with like wine glasses, uh -huh. like crazy. You redeem probably. To like 35 glasses. Wow. Yeah, no, it Why was, it was, was insane. Oh it was my insane. Word. But the thing is, like, so now when somebody comes there and you'd know, I also like learned a bit of it from just going out with with the eat out vouchers and the things, mm -hmm. the vouchers they keep, kept send, sending me. Yeah. I learned a bit a lot before, you know, having to experience such um, wine tastings, food tastings, and everything. Not that I'm good at it yet, mm -hmm. not yet. <laughs> But things like wine, mm -hmm. at the wine festival, you'd see a lot of people when they're being served wine, it's been put to that point. They're like, ah, Jaza, 
like more and more. So a lot of people wanted like their glasses. And then they're being told, you know what? You have like 35 yes. other places that you're supposed to actually. Exactly. And those are the people who are blacking out. Because by the time you're at the, like the 10th <laughs> glass, you're like, ah, you're tired, you're high too fast, it hasn't even been yeah. an hour. And you have like the whole day of sipping and interacting with people. Exactly. Because, uh, and that's why a wine tasting, you'll find that there's lots of water. Mm. And you have just a bit. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you're there to just taste it, know it, yeah. hydrate, move on. Mm -hmm. So now if you're having this, you're drinking. Remember what I asked you earlier? Yeah. Do you want to taste or do you want to drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. If I'm having mbaka huku, these are problems I'm trying to drown. <laughs> <laughs> Running away from something. I've had a long day, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if I'm having my wine kidogo kidogo, just I'm just sipping, yeah, I'm just chilling. Sipping, I'm just enjoying my my mm. alone time, my me time. Mm -hmm. And I'm also trying to if I'm with somebody, I'm trying to enjoy their company. As yeah. Well. Yes. Okay, so let's say uh if you're going different scenarios on what kind of wine would you pick? Let's say you're going on a date mm -hmm. with someone, someone you like. Okay. Uh what kind of wine would you order with them? Let's say you're having uh, a get together with parents, maybe if they drink, mm -hmm. and now you have like that wine knowledge, you know, maybe like you have, if you have old school parents who don't understand like what kind of red is red, white is white. Mm -hmm. But if you want to treat them to something nice, what kind of wine would you choose? And then when you're going out with your girlfriends and you want to drink wine in a club, what kind of wine would you order? Does does it apply? Would you have the same wine in all the different scenarios? Or for a date, you'd pick something different. From a get-together, family gathering, or conversation with a friend, pick something else. And going out, you'd pick something else. Well, if, if it's somebody I'm out on a date with, mm -hmm. as I said, I'll, I'll just ask a simple question. Yeah. Coffee. What kind of coffee do you like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be conversation. I'll be like, do you drink yeah. coffee? What coffee do you like? Mm. And that way I'll know. I'm yeah. like, hmm, okay. Is it okay? Then I'll ask you, is it okay if I pick a wine or would you like to pick a wine? Yeah. Then if he but, decides but, to but pick the wine, yeah. I'll let him pick. Then I'll be like, if you pick the wine, let me know what wine you pick. What? But here's the thing as well. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm paying for the wine, I'm thinking because I'm, I'm trying to make a good impression, right? Mm -hmm. So ideally I'm like, paying for the bottle of wine so what if i'm the wine that i'm choosing <laughs> it doesn't have to be expensive ah it doesn't okay. have to because i mean um there's lots of wines out there so you're not really kenyan are you you know those people are like i want the most expensive because it's a date it doesn't have to be expensive yeah, yeah. if i want expensive wine i know where to get expensive oh, wine. Shit, yeah. true if i want to taste expensive wine yeah Thank God for the opportunity. I've been able to yeah, taste you've been able to. this yeah. expensive wines. So okay, so I'm yeah, so back to like what you okay, you yeah. ask him like okay, let me know before. I'll, that's I'll what just be like, uh, well, if it's somebody who, well, if I say that and you don't have a problem, yeah, I'm like hmm. Okay. Then this tells me something about this person. Okay. He doesn't mind a second opinion. Yeah. So he'll tell me the wine. I'll be like, ah, oh, okay. Uh, if I'm okay with it, I'll be like, <laughs> fine. Because most of them go like, are you okay with this one? I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah sure, get it. Mm. Then I'm fine. Then we'll have a good time. Mm. I'll, I'll probably go for, if they have very bad knowledge of wine, Yeah. they point out the Frontera. No, that I know for sure. I Me, can't. I'll put it out there first. Before, be, when <laughs> I'm passing you the wine menu, I'll be like, and not the Frontera. And not the fr <laughs> Frontera, I have nothing against you, but... Yeah, and uh, no, but that comes from a lot of wine wine experts they just no, everyone is just like anytime you mention frontera they're like ah. it's not the gucci of wines <laughs> definitely yeah so everybody's always like oh, no but you see from anybody else who doesn't know that they'd be like ah that sounds familiar why don't we go with that because that's the one that i know mm -hmm. that's the one that i know okay so what what ideally would you pick for a date scenario what would you pick you go out on dates right <laughs> You're dating anyone right now? Wow. <laughs> that I, uh, that uh, escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah. I'm, all, I'm always asking this. You, you, you wait till you see Melissa's reaction <laughs> on her video. <laughs> she was like, oh. 
Ooh, wow, that that that, that, okay, went okay, from okay, mine. okay, okay. Before we get to that, before we'll save that for the outro. Before we get to that, uh, okay. so what wine would you pick on a date? Um, I'd want to be present, and I'd want to relax. Mm-hmm. So I'd probably ask for a Pinot, a Pinot Noir. Mm-hmm. If not, I'd probably have a Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. If it's a really hot day and we're sitting outside and it's very hot and I need to, or I'd have a champagne cocktail or a sparkling wine cocktail. Mm. Oh, like the ones that you wanted like us to try. Like the apple spritz, mm. or I'd sometimes and I do this all the time. I always ask, can you make? Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you? Because can I already you make. Yeah. Oh, you already know. The I already know the ingredients. So, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. I just ask, can I talk to you? Can I go to the bar and order something? Oh, yeah. So I go to the bartender and I say, can I get uh, a double of this, mix it with this, shake it, mm. and give it to me? Yeah, yeah. And I'll bring it back and I'll have you taste it. And if you like it, since you're my date, mm. or I'm your date, whichever, mm-hmm. if you like it, I'll be like, do you? We'll do, we'll do? Then, you? Yeah. What we'll, do you we'll think? Do this. Yeah. Simple. Nice. Okay, now that that's for a date scenario. Mm-hmm. Now with your parents or family gathering, you're picking picking wine for them because mm-hmm. like we said it's all about like the knowledge and yeah. they already know and even if somebody who's dating you mm-hmm. now at the back of their head they're like oh shit if we're ordering for wine i just can't ask for something hideous i have to like step up my wine knowledge a bit mm-hmm. or if that's not the case i throw it to her like and let her choose because she won't make a wrong choice yeah. when it comes to that so what about now like, like family what i'd pick a riesling Riesling. A Riesling is What's German. That? It's mm-hmm. a type of grape. A mm-hmm. Riesling is German. Mm-hmm. They have um, a, well, a go with Tramina. Well, this are types. What's of that? <laughs> what? Huh? what? A go with Tramina. That uh, that means. Tramina. Or as Patles. It's like levels of sweetness. Mm-hmm. But I'd, since I don't like sweet wine, mm. I'd pick the Riesling with least sweetness. Yeah, and also medium, because but when you have a bit of sweetness, you don't have dry. Plus, you've put into consideration that you'll have these drinks with meals as well and as with a component. parents. Yeah, and, and par- oh, parents. Yeah, okay. Your your people are not supposed to be on the table dancing. Yeah, you don't want them crazy <laughs> high. Yeah. Also, it has like just. Uh, it's just enough for you to. It's cold. Yeah. Serve it cold because mm-hmm. I don't know who serves mm-hmm. sweet wine hot. That is okay. just going to be wrong. Mm-hmm. So any I sweet wine know. that is... I wouldn't know. <sighs> pale, pale, pa, pale. I've been at Safari Rally events Over there for drinking cousins. Wa- oh, yeah, for ca- <laughs> Over there for cousins with your hot wine. <laughs> and your sweet hot wine. <laughs> <laughs> We're just hook just side-eyeing you like... <laughs> Man, you know, it's so bad. Because here's the thing. It's on... And I can tell you, like, for sure. You see, like, uh, the lady who owns like, the, wine the wine shop. shop. Mm-hmm. She's my friend. She's cool peeps and I just didn't know about wine so much that when I started buying wine at the wine shop Mm -hmm. because they have like a website where you can go get like nice sales and everything plus you can just order and delivered and stuff. Wine shop, Leo Gioni. Yeah. You have an order. But before before that like I didn't know but once I started buying from them like in their website I was like what? This one is this, it costs this much, so I can drink some th- all these exotic different wines yeah. for not without spending like crazy, crazy cash. But I didn't people, know, yeah, that's what people yeah. don't get. when you say wine, they're like, hey, Yeah, you the amount of coins you bag, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And even like when just the, the same thing, like when we say, like even when it comes to club experience, when you're taking somebody out, mm-hmm. just buy them a bottle, it might save you. Like, there are times I've spent so much money. And when I go back home, I'm like, what? Why was yeah. I, I was spending money that I didn't even have in the first place. <laughs> Boy, I, had, I had a horrible, I had a horrible evening. Bad waitress, maybe. Oh, like no. the whole experience wasn't like really it wasn't good. Pleasant. Yeah, it wasn't. Whereas you'd have chosen a different alternative because you have the knowledge of wine, leave a good impression, have yeah. a good conversation with someone. But it's all about like just taking that little step mm-hmm. of educating yourself when it comes to that exactly okay so we've talked about like you know parent scenario mm-hmm. and then now how about uh, my girlfriends your girlfriends you're we going out in a club sparkling wine to start sparkling because wine yes uh-huh. because my girlfriends yeah my my group of people yeah. they well they want to turn up not 
they want to turn up, but yeah. they enjoy as well. Ah, okay. Okay, so if I was to get a like a, a bottle of Prosecco or Lambrusco. I don't know what that is, but I'll yeah. just go with it. Mm -hmm. Monty's. <laughs> Look at you, and the <laughs> frustration in your face, like. <laughs> Monty's. But you find the, the you find this at the at the clubs. The no. Yeah. This is oh, what this I is this oh this is like a what do you call it pre a pregame pregame. Yes. Ah, okay. Huh? And most of the time we pregame and half the time we don't end up going out. We just keep on. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you know you've hit your thirties. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So um, yeah. for my girlfriends, most of the oh, every time I go to someone's house, yeah, gone are the days. What you want to what to unga maziwa. A bottle of Kate, I mm. always breakfast. We will deal with your kids later. <laughs> Fast, they're adults. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I always bring a bottle of wine. Mm. And it's your choice. You can choose whether to have that wine at that time with me or we can have it later. I yeah. don't care. When I bring a bottle of wine to you, mm -hmm. I want you to enjoy that bottle of wine. I don't I don't need you to open it and we enjoy it together mm. unless of course i'm harassing you which is half the time <laughs> i'll say no oh, no because yeah, i brought it nini up plus you're there if you're coming to catch mm. up and it's only fair for yeah. me to so bring. we i uh, will bring uh, maybe a bottle of sparkling or by the time i get to your house or to meet mm -hmm. you i'll be like red mm -hmm. white or sparkling mm -hmm. or oh, you decide let me know yeah red white red or white and so red. Okay, fine. I go. I already know. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> we are so here. So oh, we've yeah. been plugging focus. <laughs> Yo, they've got the most plug by there first of all in this <laughs> podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so I will. I will. And then I know what my girlfriend's tastes are. I yeah. know if we're meeting up like three of us or four of us, mm -hmm. and two like dry, one doesn't like dry. I'll be like. The dry is for us, and I'll, I'll I'll be like the dry is for you and I. Mm -hmm. You can you do medium body? Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't you like just yeah. That sweet. What sweet? What's that? What's that? Yeah. Sweet unless me I just go over there to the this estate shops. True. Focus in Sukoral. I have somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll I'll yeah. I'll try and accommodate everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But there is not a single person who has ever mm -hmm. hated wine. That, well, unless the one who drinks sweet. But there is one wine. I'm going to plug it. Please do. There's one wine. Yeah. I tasted. It's owned by a Kenyan, but she's based in Australia. Mm -hmm. Her name is Kendi. The wine is 6212 Nauticals. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a demisec. It's rosé. Mm. It's a Kenyan. Yes. We and it's we sparkling. Have to, we have to get the wine. We have to get it. My one friend who drinks sweet wine and yeah. doesn't do dry enjoyed yeah. this and I enjoyed it. Because it is demisec. It's in between. A, it's semi-dry. It's, it's beautiful. But you noticed, you noticed like the wine is actually good. Yes. And um, I've had a couple of bottles from 612 Nauticals. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is like her Pinot Noir is just amazing. She's got a couple of bottles. The Pinot Noir stands out to me a lot because I, I'm not big on Chardonnay. I was like, eh, hey, your Pinot Noir, my friend. I like. I love it. Mm. And now the Demisec, the the Rosé Demisec. I was like, yeah. it's Yarra Valley in Australia. It's oh my god, it's so good. Mm. So in case you're out there. And you're looking for a sparkling wine that you should try that one. Yes, try that one. It is pocket friendly, I, I believe. And if you think, ooh, this is a bit too expensive. What's pocket friendly? Can be relative. Throw the price tag out there. It will be about three thousand bob. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to go out and spend Mm. 3,000 bob. 
yeah on a go, good bottle of wine go for and that. you go for that one mm. go for that one her, her wines are priced very well mm. and if you, she has them in a couple of bars of course the bars will have their profits yeah, rents, yeah. you will find the wine almost at service charge and everything exactly okay. but if you go to i think the wine shop stocks it i'm not they sure should have most likely they do and also on her website you mm. could you could also get some oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we'll that check one. it out we'll check yes. it out so if i if i have gotten you that bottle you know you're special <laughs> okay <laughs> so now just to wind up on you know because we've talked a lot about wine and uh here's the thing about wine once you start having conversations about wine can never end because there's so much so much I'm, so much I, i am amazed at the people yeah. who've done the diplomas there's very many people yeah i'm only on level two and i i can tell you i know nothing yeah You've spoken to melissa yeah her mind yeah the way she explains it her it's knowledge insane. of wine and me i'm huku level three i'm like yep i need i i act i'm actually going to do it what's Next. what's the highest level i know of a diploma in wine Okay, but when you're saying like uh, level, level two, one, two, three, uh, there's entry level, then level two, level three, mm-hmm. then you have um, is it level? No, you have a diploma after that, mm-hmm. and then there's people who have degrees as well. I was like, that's these ones are masters yeah, of wine. That's that's insane. <laughs> yeah, like if you put me in a room with somebody like that, they'd be like, "Honey, you know nothing. <laughs> you know zero." You should do you know Soraya? Who's Soraya? She owns the wine shop. No, I don't. I should meet her. And Bru. Bru Bistro. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hi Soraya. <laughs> 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 no, she's the kind of person I think you'd get along with and she also does like little pop-ups for wine and stuff. Ah. She's a really really nice person. See, that's the beautiful thing because how did I get in contact with Melissa through socials because I'm yeah. trying to I was like I need I don't need my knowledge to be just out there. Yep. I need to bring it back to Kenya, mm. but I don't know anybody who does wine in Kenya. That's so the thing. when I got in co- into contact with Melissa, bless yeah. her heart. Yeah. She's gotten me into contact with so many people. I'm like there is this many people who Yeah, people have the passion and I'm like yo. And she goes like yes, there's actually a school that offers the W set. I'm like wow. Okay. You didn't even know. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. At times, you know, and that's where now social media comes in. Mm. Like, it's one of the like, how did we link up for this? Mm. Yeah, same way. Exactly. Yeah. So that thing on like uh, Melissa's post. Post. Yeah. I was like, like, what? Alas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even for me, I was just like, yo, when you land in the country, make sure you come. Let's have a chat about it, cause there's somebody else who is out there and they have like the same interest and everything mm. but they wouldn't know who should i reach out to to ask these I questions how's the process how can i do a b c and d they wouldn't know but now if you come in and talk about yeah. all those two little things even when somebody's going to like on a date they know those little yes. dining etiquettes that they should apply when they're mm, mm. the drinks to avoid <laughs> make a good impression not True. necessarily spending a lot but just having the knowledge and knowing that you can pick different options for yeah. for someone mm-hmm. so with that being said uh we've touched a lot on like just wine and everything what what next for you in just in terms of projections yes you want to get to the highest level of wine but is there anything else outside of wine that you still pursue as a hobby or something close to the sort i well I love traveling a lot. A lot. Oh my hey, god. You just told me about the, the next plan, the next, pla- next place that you're planning to go. Don't don't don't. Okay, okay, we won't <laughs> say it. We won't say it for now. We'll save that for <laughs> a different conversation. <laughs> But yeah, even traveling as well. Mm-hmm. But how do you get into like that mindset? What made you be Because you see for most people just even going to a foreign country and mm-hmm. starting like just to practice start over with new friends new mm-hmm. hobbies new things to do it's not the easiest things for a lot of people to start to jump jump into mm-hmm. but what kind of mindset or what do you learn from traveling what do you gain from like just um well, traveling opens your eyes in such a, a different way mm-hmm. i was so scared when i had to leave the country and move to a different country all alone 
new country I, I know nothing about this place and you language know. culture exactly mm -hmm. so I, I was like you know what I, I only need an open mind so that I can hear you <laughs> I only need an open mind for but I mean not to be shocked if anything happens or doesn't happen so that that is the first thing that I had to to think of like I made peace with I was like open mind yeah nothing should shock you at this point yeah because you're going to go somewhere same thing like if you're invited to some someone's house and you find kichwa kundanya sufuria together with the mm. wings and yeah. all other parts of the chicken namigu namigu i'll be like <laughs> but <laughs> uh -huh. yeah but in someone's homestead that's normal that's normal very normal yeah. and they'll tell you the cook is the the head is the one with the flavor you you're yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. but oh, hold on let me confirm that this thing is well, those cultural differences and just mm. so i went out there it was it was a bit hard on the first couple of weeks because this the weather is Nairobi nobody nobody will ask you if you speak, put on a sleeveless do you have a tattoo where do you have this one and that one yeah. nobody mm. will bother but there the minute you your back is out everyone is like uh -huh. so i had to sort of like to learn them a bit and then the way they speak Kenyans you have really good english yeah you speak True. to somebody when i sp i cannot speak to an Hey, we're just talking about need. So you're not bashing, you're just <laughs> describing the experience, which is just, like we said, it's a different experience. So, so I cannot speak to some, like an Arab person or an Indian or a Bangladeshi mm -hmm. or a Filipino really quickly. Like my, I cannot make a statement very fast. I yeah. have to make it very slowly and I yeah. have to say it in a certain way. I have to break my English. Like it will be a broken set. If I say it right now, you're going to... Uh, I need... I need you... Let me... We, we will have your reaction on here when I say the statement. Um, say you're asking me something about maybe what happened yesterday. So normally I'd say, oh, yesterday I had such a beautiful night. Went yeah. out, blah, blah, blah. Somebody else will come and they'll say, ah, uh, yesterday. No, we go out, no. And then yeah. we go out, no. And then, I don't know, maybe, 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 maybe too much drunk, too much. So now you see. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the funny thing, it's because I have um, a friend who does electronics and he's always like he has like a shop where he stocks like laptops every mm -hmm. every week he gets his stuff from dubai mm -hmm. so i always go to his shop because like that's where i go to do my edits as well during the day if i need to go an office space in town mm -hmm. that's where i go to do my edits so he's always on loudspeaker speaking to his dubai supplier yeah and i'm <laughs> telling you we are always <laughs> laughing because he was explaining to us like he can't the guy can't hear him if he talks correct like yeah. proper english so he also has to pick up like the like kind of accent mm -hmm. when he's talking to him and i'm like this is ridiculous it doesn't make any <laughs> sense what do you mean so he said yeah if i talk like proper proper english we won't be able to yeah. communicate but now he also talks the same way he has like that kind of like arab-ish hey. kind of english mm -hmm. but now when they talk like that and they're always like they're always screaming and it's just conversation i know and yeah. sometimes they'll say that the like they they'll try like the way we speak swahili and we no we speak english and we insert swahili mm. they will do that they'll always be like um kem 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 baswahid you're like we're like huh huh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and the fir and the first thing i had to learn actually was not yeah. marhaba or salam alaikum yeah. It, I needed to learn the numbers, number one, mm -hmm. and I needed to learn the basics. Mm -hmm. Like what? Like when they say kem fulus, it means how much money. Oh, and that's for business. Yeah. Everywhere when you're going to shop, kem everything. Fulus, kem fulus. Oh, kem fulus. Or if you just say kem, they mm. know you're asking how much. I wouldn't want to ask a girl that though, right? there. 
A unless <laughs> you want to be deported. Look at you. No, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, yeah, it's important to know this different. Yeah, so I had to learn very quickly what what wahed means, and then I was I was in the airport um, mm. constantly, and the interacting first thing with people. Yeah, mm. and they would always say bawaba, bawaba, bawaba. What's, it what's bawaba? Gate. What gate am I oh, on? Oh, what gate? What gate? So, so they need to know where yeah. to get to. Bawaba. You say. Um, now you start. I mean, what? Wahed, what? I got wahed is number. Wahed is one. Oh, so it's. Ethnen is two. Oh, okay. Thalatha is uh, Thalatha is three. Three. Four is Arba, Hamsa, Sita, Saba. Ah, from Hamsa, Sita, Saba. Exactly. Those because, I can, and it was a bit easy because we speak Swahili. They are almost Swahili. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah. now, Bimbo mm. Nipale, when it's gate 11 and you have to say Hedasha. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the first time I was like, "Wahed, wahed," because it's eleven, one, one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. And I was like, "Wahed, wahed," and I wrote. Yeah. And it and I circled it. Then he said, "Hedasha." I was like, mm. and I mm. turned to my Arabic friend. I was like, "What did he say?" He said, "Hedasha," mm. and then she asked me, "What? What, you, have, what have you been saying? Like, what do you say this wahed, wahed?" I oh, said, yes, ele- hey, one, one." <laughs> <laughs> And I say eleven. Yeah. Wow, la 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 la, habibti. Mm-hmm. Bas hedasha. I'm like, mm. like, okay. Now so I know. So I had to learn. Yeah. But the good thing with also the company that I was working for is they give you a manual and all of this. So I had to get a custom to that, and then, like, also out there they don't expect a lady to sort of like say no or, for lack of a better word, can't say no. No, like for lack of a better word, retort. Like if What's you tell that? me do this, I'll be like me and my sub my sub on self I'll be like why? Oh you n- or you can't so culturally there. Yeah, culturally when I now when I ask you why, you're like now you get angry. Oh, I'm like okay. me, I just asked why why yeah, do you yeah, want me to yeah, do yeah, that yeah. and yeah. you can do that? Like I mean it ain't They're my not job. Just to this independent women yeah. of ours. So that was kind of oh, a oh, culture shock to yeah. you because you're like I was like, what's his problem? Why is he <laughs> angry now? And I'll even ask, why are you angry? <laughs> why are you being angry now? What, what is it? Violence was not part of this conversation. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was a, a bit hard, but within the but first... But it's a culture. Yeah, within yeah. the first two months. Mm. That now... Now I know... Now I... But the first Did two months... Did you learn to be submissive? That's the question. No. Look at you. They Look at learned. You. Hmm. They learned. Yeah. If you're talking... And this is what I love about Kenyans. Yeah. If you're talking to a Kenyan, step them the wrong way, yeah. they come at you. Mm. So they know in the entire time I was working there, yeah. me, I'll not tell you at t- t- tomorrow, at t- you, you, you fuck up today, I tell you tomorrow. No, we are finishing now. Yeah, yeah. Now we place it on the table and I finish. You have your comments, you have your questions, yeah. you have whatever, I don't care. Mm. But mm. that's the thing because and I uphold Kenyans very much because they they are dedicated to their work and they know what they do. Mm. So when someone is huku calling you out, you're like, you no know, ninja, no, I know yeah. what is supposed to be done. Yeah. So yeah. they can they learned. I can tell you, I was crossed very few times mm. because you're not gonna tell a Kenyan. I'm gonna take you to the manager. A Kenyan will tell you, find me there. Mm. Sour. Okay. Let's meet there. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. you want it to go? Then now them they get scared. They're like, "Oh, I said that to threaten her, but now she's serious." Yeah. yeah now she she's just like, "Yeah." Then now they're like, that "No, no, no. Listen, <laughs> let's talk." <laughs> they're like, "Oh, uh, no, I know. Th- I thought you said." Yeah. 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 So we go. Yeah. Yeah. So they kind of learned how to. Yeah. Like deal this with is it. a d- different person. Yeah. Like this. Let's just. Uh, the same way I had to learn their culture, they had to learn. Yeah. 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 And then the other thing is doing. The hair touching business. Is it that crazy? Is it that crazy? I had to come up with a culture in Kenya. I had to bring up a culture. I said, in <laughs> Kenya, we don't touch people's hair without asking. Yeah. Me, yeah. I'm huko with my weave. And yeah. Uh, yo, Someone what is if, like, mm. I think, why is it different? Do not <laughs> touch my hair. I, is yeah. it yours? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I bought it. With it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them I bought it, but yes, it is mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Of course, there's the people with the weaves, and then maybe Sasa Mimi with my my hair. Yeah. Like, but mm. your hair is different from her hair. 
I'm like our colors are also different, but we're from yeah. the same country. Yeah, so from the same place. D- deal with it. So that also I had. I was like, my you God. had to learn how to deal and with that. And the braiding, the the braiding, yeah, amazes them, and they can't understand. Seeing like hair braided. Yes, they can't understand why you cannot. T- they see your hair braided. Can you do this for me? Oh, and their hair is just too soft. Yeah, it can't, like there's no, there's no that texture is like not there. They can't understand why you can't do that for them. They can't. <laughs> Ati, it's too so- you can't really do it's too yeah. soft I'm yeah. like yeah yeah they're disturbed I'm like why <laughs> why can't i have this but yeah you know it's just interesting because even with a lot of people that are brought to the podcast and mm-hmm. just how travel has changed them and how they react how they've grown mm. just through travel it is would you say like it's something that's important with like yo if you have an opportunity go out. please take it go and experience take something it. different yes take it go out there learn new things i would not be here yeah if i had not gone out yeah. taken the step mm. learned how to interact with people um what to you know how to exploit my potential even more mm. like i will tell you when i when i was here and studied I did not study for anything in the service industry. What did you study? Mine was a business administration. That's what you did. And then when I started working, the first job I had was a major in sales and marketing. I loved me. Basically, I like talking. So me, I'll sell you anything. Uh, yeah. I'll sell you anything. Uh-huh. So that was what I went to school and studied for four years and graduated campus from. Four. But. This is Kenya. You gotta pay bills. Yeah. And the good thing with back then was, whoever was recruiting at that point, or whatever company you would go to, they would actually have a window of training. Also, oh, they'd take you in and still. Yeah. So I was trained. I I did I did not know how to hold a wine glass. See how to <laughs> put knives on the right, forks on the left. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. full setup. I did not know how to do that. Yeah. But I was taught, I was trained. Mm. And it was that then launched my service industry. And mm. the fact that I will sell you anything in sales and marketing, then it worked for me in the service industry because that is how you build rapport with people. And yeah. And you get to know things. Um, right now, if I, was, if I have built rapport with a guest, the guest will be comfortable. To to tell me if their room is leaking, yeah. if they have a problem in their room. But they haven't told the person who's supposed to fix that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I already know. So I'll call the people concerned. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, mm-hmm. I want you, you to experience this. Because the minute I'm there, I look at it, I'm like, yo, for you to pay this amount of money for a you room? D- yeah, you don't require like no bullshit service yeah man. but of course we have those ones who are now petty who are just yeah, yeah. they complain about everything you're like yeah Jimmy, you okay let's give you this for free so that you go <laughs> but it happens yeah yeah true and the service the service people are the most patient people i know mm. because they walk in and if you're a regular they'll be like, i'm a rude <laughs> who's gonna serve them miss <laughs> not but by the time I get to your table, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm smart. Yeah, like you've switched it up. You've switched it up. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the poker face that customer service has. Mm. They will kill you while they're still smiling. Yeah. 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 That's what I've said. You know, anybody who's handling <laughs> my food, I need to know if we're in good terms. If we're not in good terms, yo, yeah. I didn't. I don't need to deal with it. So if you're if you're thinking, well, should I? Should I not? Should I? Yeah, please. Go, go out, out there, experience Experience it. everything because now even when I say I love traveling and I, w- I would want to travel more, it yeah. it's not just travel for me anymore. It's just, it's now I want to go to Tuscany. The hell is that? It's in Italy. I want to experience oh, okay. because they have vineyards. What you say? Tuskies? No. Ta- <laughs> <laughs> My country people. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, task is just, I mean, it's not that far from, from where we are. <laughs> no, but yeah, be. yeah, that's where you would want to go because now you're interested in wine and yeah. going to this actual place is just like a whole mind-blowing exactly. experience so for you. So now in my travel plans, yeah. I'm thinking Tuscany. I'm thinking Bordeaux in France. I'm mm. thinking 
Cape Town in the vineyards, Stellenbosch. Mm. I want to go. I want to have training. I want mm. to wake up in the morning, on a Monday morning, mm. put a glass of wine there. I'm at work. Yeah. That's what I want to do. I want to go in there. I want to know how the maceration is done, how extraction is done, how harvesting is How do you tell that this grape is good? How do you tell this grape has botrytis? How do you, you know, so many things. I want to be in there. I want to actually step on the grapes if I need to step on the grapes. Yeah. I want to experience Have the it. actual experience so that when you're explaining to someone. I want to be practical. Yeah, yeah. So that, that has changed my, my travel. Kitambo was like, there's the sun, there's the beach. We are going. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. But now, I'm willing to brave the winter. I'm willing to go and learn. Mm. And I don't want a tier vacation for three days. What am I going? <laughs> no, I need seven days in this country. I need yeah. to learn everything about the certain grape that I want from the or research. You mm. know, like now my travels have research in them. Yeah. Now... When I, when I tell my friends, oh, we need to do a trip, I'm thinking, we need to do a wine tour. Jeez. And this is how you know you have proper friends. Yeah. Where? Mm -hmm. See, we can go. And yeah. they're like, sour. <laughs> Start planning now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, I know. So, yeah, that, that it, if you do have the chance, go, go out, out there, there. Explore. Explore. Learn. So many things doors will open just mm. one that one step mm. i always say when it came to wine yeah because i was on the ledge when when i was selected for the wine study by my company i was like no yeah i was rejecting it because there was so many other classes that came with it i was like mm, mm -mm. i don't want to deal with all these but they were like no i was like and Let i me. sat down mm -hmm. and i called god for a summit <laughs> i had sandwiches sandwich breaks and tea breaks <laughs> come with a conference i was like i need you to point me to the proper direction because i do not know why i have been selected for this and i don't want to do it you don't know like the first thing about it or, how, or yeah. where it's going to go and the manuals the uh, i've been handed <laughs> you already know i don't like books <laughs> i read books yes but you already yeah, know yeah. me and school mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah. So by the end of by the end of it I was like you know what this this was him saying step off the ledge yeah and also and I'll it say says something you. about like at times it's okay to take that leap of faith yeah even though it might seem unpredictable you just wouldn't know until you try something out exactly you only have one life to live exactly try yeah. try worst case scenario okay doesn't work out bounce back try something else exactly and i'm so glad that i have parents and friends who support me in this mm, journey mm. because i mean my mom doesn't drink but she's always like so if it was a cause of wine <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why i was asking like you know if you have like old school parents they'd be like you know what she seems happy it seems to be working out for her i don't understand what it is but you know what support you like, it's a bit, and every time i have like wine and i'm like see you taste yeah she tasted because she used to drink when she was young she was yeah. like, <laughs> 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 uh, interesting. So, then interesting. i'm like do you want the sweet one mm -mm. yeah you you can do me so, i mean she doesn't really understand it yeah. but the fact that i'm thriving in it mm -hmm. she's like go forth be yeah. great she doesn't she's like you do you it's fine then what like if i if i'm not able to see her because i have to be here for maybe a wine tasting or whatever she's like yeah so basi where where enda maliza and then you call me when you're done yeah like i can cancel i'll still be there for you but yeah. i don't have to i don't really have to partake exactly okay now speaking of which because you know i'd love to have you here for the longest time because you know wine and talk <laughs> We can go on over, we can go I on know. and on and on. Like And like you, you know, when we're starting off the podcast, you remember what you're saying? Like, you're not sure if you can do this. I know, I was yeah. like... I look at you now. Yeah, Jamin, yeah? I'm about to order oh. another glass. Close to two hours, <laughs> close to two hours, and here we are, and we're still doing it. But, no. you know, so I have to cut people off at two hours. I mean, that's the longest the podcast can be. Yeah. Don't people, that's two Game of Thrones episodes. 
Oh, don't can even, you imagine? Don't even remind me about Kibo Films. Yeah. <laughs> so we can still, we can still always, when you come back, I can still call you for another session because we still haven't course. talked about so much. So much, and by the time I come back, I'll, I'll probably have more knowledge. More knowledge on so much more. Yes. But there's always one question that I ask people before I wind up the podcast. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing right now that you think you're seeking and if like you got it in your life, it would give you like a sense of fulfillment, direction, happiness? You know? In regards to... Just one thing that you think you're in pursuit of. Maybe it's a boyfriend, it's a husband, children. You keep rolling your eyes. <laughs> You keep rolling your eyes all <laughs> the you way. Want. You keep sliding that boyfriend into this <laughs> no, conversation. Because no, we haven't Me, talked. Because we sent. no, because we haven't talked about that, and I'm always like waiting and allocating time to just <laughs> dig into that. But now, unfortunately, just because of time, I have to save that for next time. <laughs> and it will still be a, like a whole other different conversation. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> um, maybe it's more money. Maybe it's a, s a certain job level that you want to get to. What's that one thing that you think you're in pursuit of right now? Right now. And before you answer that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what's that one thing that you think you're in pursuit of? What motivates you when you wake up in the morning? Maybe it's a big ass house. <laughs> Maybe you want a Maybach. Maybe you want... No. Yeah, I want a Maybach. <laughs> <laughs> if you we have a Maybach. We all do, we all do. Hala, <laughs> I need a Maybach. But don't come with a check. Just the Maybach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um... I know it's like one of those deep questions, but, you know, something maybe. At the end of the day, I would want... Mm -hmm. Well, of course, other than the money and... Yeah. The living whatever situation. Yeah. I would want to change like I want to change the wine mindset in Kenya mm. one person at a time yeah because by that one person like I've spoken to you you're gonna tell somebody else and somebody else and somebody else yeah so I want that to I want to see people enjoying wine mm. that is my end game I want when you talk about wine you're like oh I, I met this babe by then she told me about wine yeah so you I want to to make a lasting impression like the way you have a friend who comes in your life for a purpose yeah. Mimi I'm here to tell you about wine that's what I want I want when you think about wine mm -hmm. or the days you used to drink about we, we used to drink wine mm -hmm. like I there's a babe who told me this this about wine a while back that is what I want yeah so even if I'm gone you will always remember there's me. always something memorable about yeah wine, wine. Everybody I, I talk to and they say, uh, you're the first person who's told me about, I feel so good because mm. now I know. What? Immediately after, sorry to cut you off, uh, mm. oh, were you finished? Yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so immediately after Melissa's uh, thing behind the scenes mm -hmm. and you showed like that interest, I was like, what? People actually do this in Kenya. <laughs> uh, like, no, but you said now you're in Oman and everything, but I'm just saying like, it's so rare. Yeah, and just to find somebody who has that interest, and they, I'm guessing even for you, it was like what a conversation about wine. I was like, did a you see how about I was alluding? Yes, yes, a conversation about wine. So it's important for like, because it's up to you, I think, right now, and mm. that's where like also like uh, I think social media comes in, mm -hmm. and I think you should put more a bit of that on your social media or even open a different social media mm -hmm. if you want it to be like just about wine if you, you're not sure whether you want to mix like your personal, personal and wine thing mm -hmm. you can just open a separate one I know managing the two if one is hard enough it's gonna be a problem <laughs> <laughs> but but I think that's like a plus because I you never know like there's somebody that you're interacting with that in those uh, formal settings mm -hmm. that you're in and they'd see something that you know you're talking about like a specific one and something yeah might just be like one of those people like yes you represent your company in this but they'd be like you know what how about we work on a on a partnership level where you're just the face of this because mm -hmm. we know you can actually represent our company in a certain way we'll send you a couple of bottles we'll send you this check at the end of the month and you know 
you can still create more awareness about like what we do with those little things. It can just be like mm. a 30 second video of you like, you know, wake up in the morning. This is how you can mix up like sparkling wine with A, B, C and D. Mm. Pew, 40 seconds, somebody has the knowledge for that, brand visibility for that brand or whatever. And hey, extra to uh, go um, to that <laughs> Maybach. Eh? I'm thinking I should have a notebook. <laughs> you are just jotting down these dimes that you're dropping. No, but I'm just saying because, I mean, I'm always, the thing with me is like, because I know how to do like my social media thing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And at times when I'm interacting with people, I'm like, wow, you, you have no idea what you can actually do. If you tap into this mm -hmm. social media thing, it's, it's not even just about Kenya anymore because there are so many different strange mm -hmm. people who will connect with this simple conversations because when we're talking about wine we're not just talking about that wine that's made in kenya true, we're talking about south africa wine mm. chile all these other different places france yeah you just never know i know i'll interact with so many different people once you put that hashtag there wine sommelier hey. wine expert or oh, wine you said sommelier nobody yeah. gets that right hey. well, sommelier no who's a sommelier <laughs> Cause, cause I've had I've had to do my research. I want to do my research. Who is a Somalia? Everyone goes like Somalia. So you Somalia? Who is that? I'm not lying. Somalia. But yeah, just saying, social media is like a powerful tool that you can twist it into something completely different. Mm. Especially like for you, you're saying you're in a place where you have like an array of wine. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know, I'm just saying it, but you know. After this episode, we are sitting down for another <laughs> hour. <laughs> yes, as we should. So, I mean, I think we've, we can definitely say we've come to the end of the podcast. Unfortunately, I have to say we've come to the end of the podcast, but I'll still wait for you again when you come back to the country. Aww. And we can do this again. This is like a long distance relationship. It is going to be a long distance. I'm not good at most of them, but... <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> if I text you today and you reply after two days. <sighs> I know that's we see me. you people who do that. I do that as well. I do that as well. Just to let you know in advance. But you know, my apologies. But at least you've let me know. You know yeah, in advance. Everything. In advance. Yes, yes. So, where can people find you if they want to find you and ask you questions in regards to wine and anything we've talked about? Mm -hmm. And what else do you have going on that you'd want to plug on the podcast? Uh, you can find me on my socials, on Instagram. You can slide in my DM. It's mm -hmm. always open. Who call DM? I've met many people in my DM. It goes down in the DM. <laughs> <laughs> I've met people in my DM and we've done so many great things when yeah. it comes to wine. Yeah. Um, what I'd like to plug in is I will be doing a tasting soon. Not now. Yeah, right don't, now. Don't say the date. No. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll not say the date. But right now, there's one that I'm attending on Friday. Mm -hmm. You can follow Melissa one day if you want to know about yeah. wine tastings in Kenya. Mm. Shout she out does to Melissa. some. Um, you can, if you want to learn anything wine, there's Wine Jiro, there is Molongo Wines and Spice. Yeah. Her, she's in France at the moment I think yeah. but there's so many people and I don't even know half of them mm. that you could learn a lot um, yeah. my socials are still the same and on Twitter mm. as well on Instagram mm -hmm. for the other uh, people that I've mentioned you can also find them on the same if I'm not yeah. able to answer something I always ask for a second opinion yeah or a third from these people or I read a book yeah. who knows yeah. but yeah um, other than that, there's something we want to work on with Melissa. Do it. And I also have an upcoming tasting. I'm not going to say when, hmm. but I will let people know on my socials when it is. Yeah, once the time is ready, is everything's yes. set and done. But it will also be in Kenya and come ready to learn. Don't put on perfume or body splash if you're going for a tasting hmm. at all. Because the room then fills with different yeah. types of smells and you cannot smell anything. I don't think okay. you can tell Kenyans that, but you know, let's just say it. Let's get that clear. <laughs> yeah. A bit. You can, you can it, just do like... Uh, no, go just a bit. Yeah, yeah. Deal with, we'll go with the wind. Yeah, yeah. But 
lasting perfumes and all this do not do that when you're going for a tasting if you want to learn you can take maybe a notebook or something yeah. or yeah and carry an open mind don't go there saying this is a bougie lifestyle you're not able to just take take an open mind with you when you walk into that room because when you get out you're gonna you're gonna walk out with a lot more mm. so yeah you can I, I w- yeah he is definitely going to be there I have tell me when and when Akuja and MBA yeah. what he's tasting in the ones I didn't ask you let me put you on the spot what did you taste in that one and don't um, tell me plums listen I tasted this sweet medium uh, grapes that <laughs> No, I'm not there yet. I won't lie. I won't lie, but, but baby steps. But what yeah. I'll tell you what. Once you plan your thing, mm-hmm. uh, let me know, and then I can come. We can do. I can document it, and we can do like a nice video thing. Oh, great! A highlight of the thing. Super, super. So. I definitely will. Yeah. And also remember, when you're drinking wine, if you feel like it tastes like bread, mm-hmm. there is no wrong taste in wine. Mm. It depends with your taste buds. But if you feel like it tastes like bread, it cooled. Why? Because some wines have yeast in them, added to them. So they have a brioche kind of taste. Uh, maybe just your palate is not used to these nice things. Mm. <laughs> But there's always, n- there's always time to learn. That's why you're here. There's always time to learn and <laughs> know all these different things. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. there's no wrong taste in wine. People taste stones in wine, yeah. smoke. Mm. It's been cocked or whatever. You know, there's so yeah. many. And if you have a bottle of wine like this with a cap on, if you yeah. open it, maximum four days. Four. You can oh keep yeah, it don't keep it too much. Don't keep it too long. Yeah. Because okay. if you keep it too long, then it tastes like. So even that I didn't know because I used to put like wine can be in the fridge after I pop it open like. Four days is even max. Two four weeks. days. I used to. I'm do pushing like two the weeks. envelope. So if you open a bottle just know like you're meant to actually have it if you want to still experience the nice yes, rich. Yes. As long as it's capped. But oh if okay. it's corked? Yeah. Well the cork can stay longer. Corked can buy up to the fourth day, but also corked you can't. Oh, yeah. Still. Still. Okay. See, all those different things that we didn't know. Yeah, and if you feel your wine is too hot, dunk one ice cube in it. Mm. to drop the temperature a bit or you can put your wine in the fridge for just a short while just chill it it's chill it kidogo but si jase mamu weke ice cubes mpaka hapa alafu mweke wine on the rocks on the rocks on the rocks we are not doing that on the rocks <laughs> and don't be like that person i gave wine and they added sugar hey okay that's a story for another day for the and next I left podcast the building. i left the building i could not even leave the N- I no left you the have building. to you can't be affiliated with such <laughs> a person <laughs> Okay so ladies and gents <laughs> another amazing episode featuring Carol thanks for coming through to the podcast I wish you nothing but the best thank you very much was and pleasure. I hope to see you soon again yeah, inshallah inshallah. I hope, inshallah inshallah I hope to see you soon again thank you and you're welcome anytime you know that thank you now thank you, you know much. now, now you know. I know yeah. now I know so we'll drink some more wine of course after this and you know for guys if you're listening if you're watching iTunes subscribe to your iTunes um Castbox if you're an- on Android uh we on Facebook as well YouTube the Kiss Capades podcast make sure you subscribe give us that like and rating in all the shows that you listen to all the snippets are on Instagram as well and make sure most importantly for you Carol <laughs> thanks for listening and thanks for watching it's the Kiss Capades podcast goodbye